Hey, what's good, fam? Welcome back to another episode of Will on a Whim. A Will on a Whim what? A uh, natural hair edition. Today, we really about to do this natural hair journey video. But first, go ahead and click that subscribe button for weekly videos on how to take care of your natural hair. All right, listen, okay? I've scrubbed the internet. My Facebook, my Instagram. I went all through my computer to find pictures, okay? Why? Uh, to show you my growth in my natural hair journey. That experience definitely was nothing short of cringing at various moments over the past three years of my life, but it also was very refreshing to know that I've come pretty far over the last three years in terms of my hair growth. At the end of this month, okay, it's December 2016. At the end of this month marks my three year anniversary for growing out my hair. It's been a pretty wild journey, as you can imagine, with this stuff on my head. Which is why I'm excited to bring you all today's video. So let's get it cracking. It all started when I was just a young hustler out here, just looking for ways to improve myself. This is me at age six, okay, ready to wild out in the world. Something that definitely was hard to do when every week I'd just be sitting down in the chair at Mr. Maurice's barber shop. Can you hear me or not? So fast forward to senior year of high school. I had tried so many times to grow my hair out, freshman year all the way up to graduation, but the habit was strong, fam. That along with comments from friends, and family who always were telling me to comb the naps out or just cut it all off. I decided to just keep going back to the barbershop. It wasn't until college that that had changed. That's me, uh, freshman year Will, ready to stunt. This picture was taken in the first days of college where I, surrounded by some of the women you all see here, realized that college for me wasn't going to be just about the academic experience. It was going to be about me growing into my skin and appreciating the things that come of me naturally. One of those things was my hair. All throughout my freshman year, I had started thinking seriously about my hair and consumed like a good 30 natural hair videos a day. Fast forward to December of 2013, the end of my first sophomore year semester, I had officially decided to start growing my hair. Three months later, I was all up in the journey, okay? I was all up in there finna get crunk. I no longer had friends and family telling me to cut off my nappy hair. The barber near my college was Definitely across the river and through the woods, just way too far, and ain't nobody got time for that. So, getting my hair cut was just out of the question, even if I wanted to get it cut. At the beginning, I primarily wore my hair out, and I didn't really know what I was doing, but what seemed to work was wetting my hair with lukewarm water, and immediately following that with coconut oil. So, I literally did this every single day, up to maybe three times a day. I didn't really have a consistent conditioning or shampoo regimen. I just kind of, you know, did whatever. Okay, so now I said this in a previous video, and I'll say it again here. I was literally obsessed with bandanas, okay? Obsessed like the movie with Beyonce when she knocked that girl out. I myself thought that bandanas were the perfect accessory for my TWA, okay? AKA teeny weeny afro. And so they were a regular part of my get up. As I continue to watch YouTube tutorials, okay? I'm talking Natural 85, okay? Fusion of Cultures, Simply Bianca Alexa, Juju B, The Smartista, okay? Nia, Nia Imani, shout out to Nia. I really started to appreciate my hair and the fact that it was it was more fun than it was work. Little did I know that I was protective styling all this time. I wore my hair every which way, okay? Two strand twists. I dabbed a little with the single braids, which because of the shame, y'all, I had from the fact that I couldn't really part well, um, I would wear along with it some uh, some hats, you know what I mean? <laughs> to cover up the bad parting. One day, I decided to ask one of my friends for a quick and slick braid up. And that was my first cornrow set. I used to do this roll and tuck also. Um, it was sort of a pompadour sort of get up style. I don't, I don't know what to call it. By this time also, I had realized the importance of wrapping up your hair. So this was the situation for me just about every single night. So after all of this unintentional moisturizing, because I would moisturize every single day with the coconut oil and the water, um, and all of the unintentional protective styling that I was doing, which really was just me having fun with my hair and figuring out all the different ways that I could style it, cornrows, twists, pompadour. Also, by the end of my sophomore year, I had had a lot of firsts, okay? My first twist out, my first wash and go, and my first time straightening my hair. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> this was sort of a crazy thing that I did, but I didn't come out with any damage, so... Everything was all good in the neighborhood. So fast forward to junior year 2014. This was the year of many twists for me, okay? After one summer day, 
just before my junior year started, my homegirl Osha, okay, what up Osha? How are you doing? Comment below. <laughs> she hooked me up with some mini twists and I was obsessed, okay? Even though they took me a good six, seven, eight hours, I would put in a new set of mini twists every two weeks all the way up to my senior year. When I finally learned how to braid and cornrow, I would actually braid up the sides of my head um, and then on the top and in the back, I would do either mini twist or single braids. So I started off 2015 strong with a twist out, okay? And tons of growth. But that entire summer of 2015, I kept my hair protected in mini twists with cornrowed sides. It was that summer that I think really influenced the next major things that happened to my hair. So if you didn't realize that, I haven't really talked too much about trimming my hair. That's because I had never really thought about it up until that summer. I remember undoing my twist one day and being like, uh, <laughs> this ain't lit fam. My ends were definitely just like really dead. They were extra fluffy, tangled, split. They were just like not looking right. You know what I mean? So right before the semester started, I decided to straighten my hair and give it a trim. So I buy a blow dryer, I buy some heat protectant, I think I'm doing it all right, I get a flat iron, and I do the deed, okay? I straighten my hair, and I end up cutting off two to three inches um, all around my head. And then, um, you know, I I don't really care for my hair being straight. Like, it's, it's a good, it's a cool idea, you know what I mean, to be able to straighten your hair and to have it revert. But I'm not really yearning for my hair to be straight, you know what I mean? So, just, Maybe a couple of hours after straightening my hair, after the trim, I wanted to revert my hair. So I was like, let me throw some water on that and hope and pray that like my hair reverts and my curls come back. The big question is, am I going to get heat damage because of whatever, you know, what the flat iron, obviously, but like because of whatever lack of protection, whatever. And that was definitely heavy on my mind. So I put some water on my hair. And I watched as my curls revert. Some of them are like popping, you know what I mean? But others just didn't come back to life. And that was the hard thing for me to go through. Some of my curls just like fell completely limp. I mostly had damage in the front of my hair. I already have a looser texture in the front of my hair. So straightening it just like, it was just a bad idea all around. So I ended up cutting off two to three more inches. And so I went from this to this, and I don't know if you can see too big of a difference, but when I cut my hair, I definitely lost a lot. So I started off senior year with a little setback. Yes, okay, in terms of growth. That summer also had got me really accustomed to seeing myself with my size cornrowed back. So at the end of my first senior year semester, December before 2016, I decided that I was gonna shave my sides. I sectioned my hair off very carefully on both sides of my head. I grabbed the scissors, okay? I was like, let me do this real quick, okay? This is gonna be a quick thing. And I didn't look back, okay? I snatched the hair right off my head and OMG, WTH, what the heck did I just do? Is what I thought initially, okay? For like a good nanosecond. But it wasn't until soon after that that I actually fell in love with my shaved sides. I was like, this is the best decision I could have made um for two reasons one it looks cute you know what i'm saying like i like it um two i don't have to deal with so much hair anymore um it was taking me like i said six seven eight hours to mini twist my hair and shaving off a big old chunk of hair here and a big old chunk of hair there really did save me a lot of time now with the shave size that i had i was really excited to try out all the different styles that i had already tried out and then some to see what they looked like with the shave size so i was just you know going through it i was just mini twisting <laughs> braiding corn rolling i was doing it all twist outs washing goes um, they were all there. I was really excited to do my hair now that I had shaved sides. Fast forward to summer of 2016, the birth of Will and a Whim, where I decided to, you know, tell everybody about natural hair because not only was my hair growing, but I was growing myself. I had gone through a lot with my natural hair, not just in terms of taking care of it, but in terms of <sighs> sort of just adding natural hair to my daily sort of social landscape uh walking around in, in public spaces where um you get comments and you get stares um and even forthright policies that are just like 
we don't, you know, support natural hair or natural hairstyles. I learned that just like our sister Solange said, okay, our hair is the feelings that we wear. Um, and I went through it, okay, emotionally with my natural hair. I had really good times, times where, you know, right now I'm like really liking my hair and it's really like a, it's a, it's a fun thing, you know what I mean? Sometimes like, your hair isn't cooperating with you, it takes long to do, or you're experiencing shedding and you don't know what's wrong. And it can be a really like tough, stressful situation. So your hair definitely is like tied to your emotions in some, some form, right? It was really bizarre to me that something that made me sort of so harmlessly joyful, something that made me appreciate myself and things that came with me naturally, um, made others like really uncomfortable. That was the hardest sort of mental speed bump to get over was realizing that my hair um, made other people uncomfortable when it made me so comfortable and who I was. So that's why I wanted to create this space, this community, which I'm happy that it's it's budding and it's growing and I, I'm glad you all tagged along with me on this journey. You know, it just feels good to like love yourself naturally and, I, and that's what I want for everyone, not just men, um, but for everyone out there who has an ounce of natural hair in them you know i hope you guys take those words internalize them you know what i mean and then go spread the news and maybe start your own journey or continue with your own journey um in a more inspired way so i hope you all enjoyed this video bye Try to run your five fingers through my history Kinks, curls, and naps are part of my identity No lie, I've broken teeth off of quite a few combs Thick like the forest where they used to hang my family from I